Hi, this is Sandy from Spitfire's customer experience team. And in this video, we're going to take a look at Originals, Epic Strings. When you first load the plugin, you'll be presented with the default preset. In this case, that's the live preset. Starting in the top left, we have the LED. This shows when an instrument is loaded by lighting solid green. If it's flashing red and green, that means the instrument is not loaded into RAM yet. To the right of this, we have a CPU and disk meter, so we can see how our computer is performing. We can also see the preload buffer size under memory. This tells you how much of the sample content is loaded into your RAM. Next to this, we can see the number of voices that are currently being used. And we also have a refresh button, which allows you to refresh the instrument. If you hold Alt or Option whilst you click this, it will refresh the whole plugin. This can be useful if you're having issues with hanging MIDI notes, for example. At the top in the middle here, we have a MIDI channel selector. By default, this is set to any, meaning that the plugin will respond to MIDI coming in on any of the 16 available channels. If you'd like it to respond to just channel one, for instance, we could just choose one here. I'll leave that on any for now. We also have global tune, pan, and volume controls for the plugin. And then in the top right, we have this button with the ellipsis or three dots which allows us to choose how the plugin will respond to velocity, the default being a linear response. But we also have options for shelf, exponential negative, and exponential positive. We also have the option to reset the CC mappings for the plugin to default or clear them entirely if we want to set these up custom. Unless you have a particular mapping in mind, this is probably best left well alone. And in the top right, we have the global settings for the plugin. Clicking on this cog icon will allow us to adjust some general settings. The first page that we'll see is the option to copy the settings we've made here to any other Spitfire products. Then clicking on the left here, we have different sections, such as interface, which will change things such as whether or not help text is displayed in the bottom left of the plugin, as well as the size and scale of the plugin by default. We also have some other options, such as whether the mic faders are automatically loaded and unloaded when you adjust them from zero, and how the gain units are displayed, whether in decibels or as a percentage and some other general options for how the plugin interacts with the mouse. Under interface, we have audio settings. These are the size of the preload buffer and the stream buffer, as well as the maximum number of voices that the plugin will use. You also have the option for master tuning. So if you use a different tuning for A, then set this to the frequency that you use for the A above middle C, such as 441 or 390, 500, it's up to you. This is measured in Hertz. Unless you're having any performance issues, I generally recommend leaving the audio settings alone. Under audio, the final category here is the plugin settings, and this allows you to choose which of the presets will load by default, or indeed, if you want no preset to be loaded by default. This can be useful if you're building a template and you don't want the plugin to really use any memory. At the top, we also have an about section, which has any software acknowledgements for any licenses that we've used, um, where you can scroll through and read this at your pleasure. Once you've made some changes, you can save them or you can cancel out by clicking here. So underneath the heading with the settings, the plugin is divided into two main sections. At the top, we have our preset browser and our main controls. And along the bottom, we have our signals and controllers. If you want to just see the preset browser and the main controls, you can click this button in the top right here to collapse it down. Clicking again will unfold it. At the top here, we have our preset browser. You can click this arrow to open up the preset browser. You can scroll this list on the right to choose a different preset. Hover the eye icon here to find out a little bit more about that particular preset. You can also click the stars to highlight your favorites, as well as clicking on the play icon to hear a short preview. On the left-hand side, we have some different tags that we can use here. For instance, I've added some stars to some of these. If I click on the star tag, I'll only see those filtered. If I want to see just short presets, I'll click on the short tag. And if I wanted to see short and consort, I could click these both and I'll see both of these. There's also an option for user presets. Since I haven't made any user presets yet, this will display an empty list. So I can unclick that. To load a preset, you can either click it and then click load or double click it. On the right of the preset browser here, we also have options for navigating back and forth through our preset list without opening the menu. And this floppy disk icon will allow you to save your own preset. I'll save this one as my preset. Now, if I look under the user tag, I'll see that preset available. Under the preset browser, we have our main controls. From left to right, these are expression, 
which is a level adjustment for the volume of the plugin. And this is assigned to MIDI CC number 11. Next to this, we have dynamics. For the long articulations, this will crossfade between the different recorded dynamic layers. So when it's lower, you'll hear a quieter dynamic layer. And when it's full, you'll hear the loudest dynamic layer. If you have short articulations loaded, this will act like a compressor for the velocity response. So when it's set to zero, the short articulations will respond to dynamics normally. And when it's set to full, the dynamics will always be at full for short articulations. Next to our dynamics controller, we have the knob. This can control any of the three controllers we see in the bottom right here. To change which controller you're adjusting, you click on the middle and then choose the control you'd like to adjust. For instance, reverb, which controls the amount of artificial reverb being added to the signal. Release, which adjusts the amount of time it takes for the sound to release after you lift the key. This only applies to the long patches. And the tightness control. This cuts into the beginning of the note to make it sound tighter, but it does reduce the realism slightly. This one only applies to short articulations. If you'd like to check the MIDI assignment for any of these controls or change it, simply right click on the controller. You can see the current assignment here with the option to remove it, and you can also see the option for MIDI Learn. In the bottom half, we have our signals and controllers. In Epic Strings, our three signals are the Close, Room, and Stretch. The Close and Room do essentially what they sound like, the Close being a, more, a tighter, more direct sound, and the Room being a combination of Decatree, Ambient, and Outrigger mics, giving a more ambient and distant sound. The Stretch signal is a time-stretched version of the Room signal, which creates an even more ambient, probably synth-like texture. Dragging any of these faders to zero will unload that signal from memory, and you'll see this reflected in the memory readout at the top. As I load it in, the memory increases. As I unload a signal, it decreases. You can also load and unload these from memory using the switches underneath the fader. If you create a setting of with the different signals that you'd like, you can save this mixer preset by clicking on the Save Mixer Preset button, and then load it. On the right-hand side, we have our three controllers. These are the same controllers available in the knob above, but we can see them each side by side. Again, you can right-click on any of these to learn or unlearn any MIDI assignments. If you've found some settings for the signals and controllers that you'd like, and you wouldn't like them to be changed accidentally, you can click on this little padlock icon to lock these controls. Clicking again will unlock them. Finally, along the bottom of the plugin, we have our keyboard display. This shows you the playable range of the instrument. It also shows you which notes are being played when you're playing back. And in the lower left hand side, we can see the information panel, which will display handy tips about any of the controls that you hover over with the mouse cursor. That's it for our quick overview of the original's epic strings. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at spitfireaudio.com support. Thank you.